addicted to the struggle? Meaning, are we addicted to things being hard, things feeling challenging, things feeling heavy, things feeling uninspired and mundane? This is uh, something I've been thinking about more lately as I've been reflecting on my experience with alcohol addiction. Um, I reflect on the experience a lot because I felt, I feel like, um, you know, everything in life happens for a reason. And for me, that experience has just been a huge learning opportunity, especially now being removed from it. And so I've been thinking a lot how I was addicted to the struggle that came with that experience of being um, addicted to alcohol. Now, of course, yes, I was addicted to the substance and what alcohol made me feel or made me not feel and um, relying on it to kind of just numb out and block uh, myself from feeling things in life. So I was addicted to the substance, but I'm realizing now that I was also addicted to the struggle that came with alcohol. And for anyone who has suffered with an addiction, whether it's alcohol or otherwise, um, you probably know that it can induce a certain type of struggle in your life, being addicted to drugs or alcohol or food or whatever. And for me, because the alcohol brought about this struggle, you know, it made everything hard. It made getting up for work to shower in the morning hard. It made doing laundry hard, kind of day-to-day house stuff hard. Um, That was the environment and the conditions I was living in for about 10 years that I was addicted to alcohol. And so it was something that I was very, very used to. And we are, you know, creatures of habit. We tend to, most of us tend to kind of create habits that we do day to day without really even thinking about it because it's, it's comfortable for us to kind of be in this, this routine of habit. And so I was in this habit of struggle, of things feeling hard and sad and depressing and heavy and just not, not good, not well. And so um, when I would try to get sober before the Sinclair method, and I did it dozens of times and failed every single time until um, the Sinclair method, um, I would find that, um, yes, I would eventually be met or be battling with the cravings that were kind of talking to me and telling me to drink again. But it would also become really scary to be sober and to be clear and to not be blocking these emotions and feelings. I would... Um, I feel like I would, you know, start off really inspired and motivated to quit and I'm going to do it this time. And then over a course of a couple of days or weeks or months, I would start to feel so alive and, and feel so much and so alert and clear that that experience was so new and overwhelming to me. Like literally not something I had felt since I was like young before I had started drinking alcohol um, and became addicted So it was really scary because I did not, I was not familiar with it. It was not conditions that I was used to existing in. And so in addition to having the cravings kind of talking to me, it was much easier to kind of fall back into the struggle and the darkness of alcohol because it was, it was familiar to me and it was what I knew. Now, thinking back too to like childhood and what I've been told and taught by media and people in my life is that life is supposed to be hard. Um, life is supposed to be, you know, a struggle or life is supposed to be challenging. It's competitive. You got to get out there and fight for what you want. And so unconsciously, I have been holding on to this belief, which I'm still trying to shed, that life is supposed to be hard. I really don't believe that life is supposed to be hard. I believe that life can feel joyous and full and abundant and fulfilling Um, But I've been carrying around this belief about life needs to be hard and be this struggle. And so when I was addicted to alcohol and it was creating all this struggle in my life, it was really easy for me to say, okay, yeah, life is supposed to be hard because everything is so hard. And I think even sometimes I would make light of it, like especially if I was hungover, like, oh, I don't want to do anything. Like, oh, you know, try to kind of like justify it in a way. Um, but it really made everything hard, but even though it was hard, it was what I was used to, and so I was conditioned to that, and so to break out of that, it felt unfamiliar and uncomfortable, and so it was easy to stay wrapped up in that experience of the alcohol addiction, of the struggle. And so I've really been realizing how this unconscious belief about life needing to be hard 
had been leading my life for so long. And of course, with the experience of alcohol addiction, um, because everything was hard around me and difficult and challenging and painful and uninspired and uneventful and just felt like blech, um, that affirmed that belief that I had. And so I kept perpetuating that belief and living from that experience that life would be hard. So, you know, most days I would have hangovers, I'd be in a fog, I'd feel, you know, uninspired or depressed and not well. And now the difference, having, you know, gone this whole route with the Sinclair Method and getting sober and truly having cravings for alcohol gone from my mind, having no desire for alcohol, um, it's really allowed me to get into this place where I'm living in a more loving and joyful place every day and feeling how easy life can be and when you are when you are plugged into your truth, when you're not masking it or numbing it with alcohol, and when you start to shift your beliefs about what you're thinking about what your life needs to be. Our thoughts are creating our reality, our experience around us. So um, especially with getting sober these past six months or so, I've really been looking at my thought patterns and where my mind is going and what beliefs I'm holding on to that are creating the world around me. And even this belief about life is supposed to be hard and supposed to be a struggle, you know, having some sobriety under my belt and feeling uh, really removed from alcohol dependence, I notice I still have that belief. And so with that belief, I still make things hard on myself or harder than they need to be. And I, I just invite you all, I suppose, to consider where your thought patterns each day, where your beliefs are leading you. If you're in an environment right now where anything feels heavy or hard or challenging or, or um, uninspiring or just not good, consider how you are contributing to that with your thoughts, with your beliefs. And um, for me, it's helped me kind of get um, more clear on these unconscious thoughts and beliefs I have are of course meditation. Um, I started doing guided meditations like seven years ago and those really changed my life and I still use them today um, in addition to you know just regular silent meditation but if you're new to meditation I would highly recommend starting with guided meditations because they really work to to guide you through um, this process of kind of relaxing yourself and opening up your mind to um, put more positive, affirmative beliefs in there rather than unconscious loops that you might be running. Um, because for so many of us, you know, myself included, I'm always peeling away layers of these unconscious beliefs that I have that are really driving my life that I'm not even aware of. Um, and so going back to the struggle, like I had this belief, yes, that life was supposed to be hard and falling into alcohol addiction, that affirmed it, that life was supposed to be hard. Um, but it was because I was, it was what I knew and what was familiar. So it was really easy to stay there in this, this environment that I was conditioned to be in and to break free from that when trying to get sober before it would be really scary because that clarity with that sobriety would bring would be too new and too too much. I feel too much and it would be scary and it was almost easier just to fall back into the routine of dependence and the struggle because it was so familiar to me. And um, this has happened a little bit too with getting sober through the Sinclair Method. The sobriety has felt a little fearful and a little bit, oh my God, like this is too much. And um, you know, I've I've over time developed techniques that have worked for myself to um, allow myself to cope and feel safe and allow myself to really detach and close off from the world in healthier ways because that's what I was using alcohol for was to really like hide from the world and I still have that experience of wanting to do that sometimes but I do it in much healthier ways. Um, so yeah, I just want to invite you all to consider if your life does feel like a struggle um, and you don't want it to or, or you're open to the idea of living a life that feels more in joy and in peace and in flow and love and abundance, which I believe that that's our natural state. I believe we've just forgotten that because we've been so conditioned to believe otherwise. And so um, it's possible to live in that experience and love of joy and abundance no matter what your circumstance is right now. Um, and it really just starts with, with, yeah, changing your beliefs, changing your behaviors, and little tiny changes you can do every single day to help improve yourself and improve your life and your surrounding environment. Um, I know for me, it was like always just felt like this massive feat to like 
feel joy. Like I'm so far away from feeling joy. How am I ever going to get to that? Like, look at my life now. Nothing feels joyful. Um, but how you get to that place is just tiny little incremental changes and shifts every single day, implementing a new habit that's good for you every single day, um, paying closer attention to your thoughts, having more awareness on your thoughts and your patterns, and when they start to take you down a dark hole, um, catching that, stopping yourself, um, going out, going outside, changing your environment, doing anything to get out of that, that unconscious conditioning of the struggle. Life does not have to be a struggle. And this is something that I notice myself being yeah, addicted to the struggle and even now kind of shedding these, these ways that I just make things hard for myself or I carry this belief that, you know, I'm not good enough or it's never going to be that way or you're not supposed to feel like happy all the time or, you know, things, look at the world, things are so sad and depressing. There's, there's so many ways that can get us down and make things feel heavy and challenging and hard, but there's possibility beyond that. There's possibility for so much joy and love and abundance. And it's, it starts, you know, the cliche, it starts with you, it starts within. And the biggest thing that I've seen to help me is, um, especially in the past six months of sobriety, is these small incremental changes that I've made each day that over time are adding up to shifts in my belief and perspective and a more joyful and easy life that feels good and feels meaningful. So I just wanted to make this video to invite you all to consider how are you perpetuating your own struggle? Are you addicted to a struggle? And how is that serving you? And how might you be able to um, shift that for yourself and move beyond a life of struggle and move more into a life of ease and fun and play? Um, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Thank you.